Okay, so we've got two forms and two form fields down, but there are a lot of questions that remain. First of all, what is with that wedge thing? Why do we keep using that symbol? How do we go from two forms to three forms and four forms, etc.? Well, the answers to all of these questions are bound up in this wedge product, in this funny looking symbol that shouldn't intimidate you. It's really just a symbolic representation of what happens when we convert vectors into a matrix and take a determinant. Here's a few facts. Instead of working with dx and dy and dz, let me work with dxi or dxj, where i and j are in the values 1, 2, and 3. Here are a few facts. The first one is that the wedge product is anti-commutative. DXI wedge DXJ is minus DXJ wedge DXI. The second fact is that DXI wedge DXI is zero. Both these facts hold for all I and J in the set one, two, and three. Now, these are facts, so you can just roll with them, or you can think about why they are true. Let's consider the first one. Let's say we have a pair of vectors, u and v, and we feed them in that order to dxi wedge dxj. You know and I know what that basis two form does. It takes the determinant of the two by two matrix that has rows consisting of the ith components of these vectors and then the jth components of these vectors. Now, what happens if we reverse the order? What happens if we look at dxj wedge dxi? Then it's still a determinant of a two by two matrix that has the same entries, but the two rows are switched. And you know, and I know, or at least I think we remember, what happens to a determinant when you switch the rows, you get a factor of minus one. I remember that back from volume one. Okay, so that explains why the wedge product is anti-commutative. Can we think about why wedging a basis one form with itself gives zero? Well, given what we just proved, dxi wedge dxi is really equal to minus dxi wedge dxi, and therefore must be zero. Wait, what? What did I do there? Oh, right. I reversed the two things, and I used anti-commutativity. Maybe you can come up with a better proof using determinants. Okay, but now that we've got that down, uh, how do we make sense of three forms or four forms or other things? Well, let's go slowly. Let's say we have three vectors, u, v, and w in R3. A three form is going to eat those three vectors and return a scalar. Let's consider a basis three form dx, wedge dy, wedge dz. This is in fact the basis three form as we shall see. What does it really mean? It has something to do with volume, oriented volume, because if I feed it these three vectors, u, v, and w, what do I do? If I follow my nose, it seems like we should be taking the determinant of the three by three matrix that has rows equal to the x components, y components, and z components in that order. This, of course, is just the determinant of the matrix I get that has these three vectors as columns. And if you remember the scalar triple product back from volume one, you see that that's exactly what this basis three form is doing. And you may recall all of the, the symmetry properties associated with the scalar triple product, how in some orders it's the same, in other orders you get a minus sign. This all has to do with the algebra of determinants and thus with the algebra of the wedge product. But there's more to it than just algebra. We can think about this in terms of the geometry of determinants as well, because the scalar triple product was giving us an oriented volume in 3D. Okay, that's it for basis three forms. Three form fields in R3 are all expressed as this basis three form times some scalar field, times some zero form field. Now, why do we only have dx wedge dy wedge dz? Why not some other three form like, I don't know, dx wedge dy wedge dy or something like that? Well, that's not gonna be interesting. 
for the same reason that four forms or 11 forms are not interesting in 3D because they're all dead. They're all zero. They're all nothing. Why? Because dxi wedge dxi is zero for any value of i. So if I tried to write down a basis four form in 3D, it would have to be something like uh, dx wedge dy wedge dz wedge one of the other guys, like, like dy or dx. And that repeated term gives me a zero. Now, if I think about this geometrically, what that means is that oriented uh, four-dimensional volume doesn't really make sense when you're looking at a region that is spanned by vectors that are restricted to 3D. Now, that doesn't mean that there are no four forms of interest somewhere in this universe. If you dare to go past some of the chapters that we're in now, you'll see something of this. But for all practical purposes, if you're working in 3D, you don't have four forms. You've got zero forms, one forms, two forms, and three forms, and that's it.